Hello everybody and welcome. Welcome to CS302 Online, day one of lecture time. I am very, very excited to be here and talking to you guys. I welcome you to those that were able to join live, but those of you that are watching from YouTube later on when the recording is uploaded, my hello to all of you. Welcome to this class. As I've said before, this class is a little bit of favoritism, but it is my favorite class to teach at, at UNLV. While other classes are fun to teach, I have a special place in my heart for this class just because I like the topic. So it gets me excited every time I got to go teach this class. Uh, with the exception of the first topic, which the first topic is a little bit hardcore and can get a little bit uh, intense mathematically. But uh, other than that, the class is just so much fun to teach. And it's actually a relatively easy class to teach once you know what you're talking about too. So that is always a big plus. Uh, although historically, I always screw up one subject. Like there's an algorithm that I always mess up. And I believe it's the minimum spanning trees, which is like near the end of the semester. I had to actually um, teach it, like we record a lecture once. So we'll see if we screw up this time around. If not, then uh, we'll see. But uh, I welcome you guys here. And um, you know, if you're watching live, then uh, if you are writing on there, the chat will appear here, which will be recorded on the video. So I, I welcome you not to use your real name if you would like to perform some, prefer some anonymity, but please, please behave yourself and don't, don't write anything scary. Um, I will try, if, if I notice that some of you are coming regularly, you can become like moderator so you can moderate the chat. There's a 10 minute delay between from when you join the channel to when you can chat. That's, that's intended to avoid random strangers coming in and trying to write uh, messages that could be uh, questionable content, okay? But uh, enough about that. Let's, let's actually jump in into the class. So let me go ahead and I don't, oh, I didn't turn in my... Uh, here we go. I didn't turn in the, the tablet sharing, so okay. Here we go. Get ready to see a really cool transition, I suppose. Actually, I, I could make it cooler, but ah, there we go. Okay, it worked. Yay! So this is how I will typically teach the course. I have a tablet. This course, there's some coding. You will see a little bit of coding, but the majority of it is a lot of drawing. We will all be artists by the time we graduate from this class, and uh, we will all hopefully do good in this class. And so. There's a lot of drawing involved, and fortunately, I have a little iPad here, and I am able to write, and whatever I write here will appear. So, uh, here's the pen. I have I have a spare pen as well, and so I'm just going to put a little sm uh, smiley face just to test it. So, yeah, it works fine. So, yep, we are ready to go. And so, here's here's the the plan for today. I know I have put a lot of things here. I always put more things than we can cover, just so that we have extra stuff in case we get there. So, typically when you see the topic list and this is usually what I do for the uh, for the little icon of the video what do you call it the, the uh, not an avatar but just just the preview the preview image is typically just this I'm like smiling and then bam I just take a screenshot of that so I usually have more things here than we'll cover just so we have enough to cover and then they kind of rotate as we go on so the first thing I want to do is I want to do a very 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 brief uh, review of C++ and pop and since we have some people live maybe you guys can 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 ask me if there's something specific that you want me to go over otherwise i'll just go over the things that i think that that some of you might struggle if you haven't coded in a little while such as over the summer and then from there we are going to jump in into actual topics which is the asymptotic complexity and if big if we get there we will even talk about recurrent relations today if but that is going to be a topic that's going to take us at least a week so if not next week is like recurrence relation week which again that's the topic that i say is probably the hardest one of the course because it's very math math heavy and recursion kind of gets involved and it's just it's just a it's just a big scary topic that i warn people because like people see that and they're like wow this is extremely hard what am i going to do this, this is the beginning of the class but no 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 fortunately here we start with the hard part and then go to the easy parts, which is good. Get it out of the way first, you know? So, yeah. Okay. So, um, is there anything from anybody in terms of coding that you would like me to review? Any topic? Ooh, flicker. <laughs> Sorry for that. If there is anything in specific that you would like me to go over, uh, please, please, now is your, your chance to, uh, to speak up. Otherwise, I'm just opening right now. A virtual machine so that I can write some code so that I can uh, um, you know code a little bit so you can see would it be possible to briefly talk about vectors that's a good one because I know that some people don't really cover vectors so yes vectors might be a good thing 
Uh, virtual functions, we can do some virtual functions. That's a little bit harder to kind of go over in a short period, but I can definitely try. Uh, I don't think you might need virtuals for the first assignment either, so that's not too bad. But uh, I will do my best to, to throw in some virtual stuff in there. Recursion, we can save that discussion for the recurrence relations because that's related. So we don't really need to do too much about the recursion right now. Uh, first assignment uses a virtual. Oh, it does? Ah, I, I wrote that assignment last, last, uh, last spring. So, uh, oh, I guess because if you do, you probably do, oh, yeah, you're right. There's like a sort of a who am I kind of, kind of virtual function, right? Which is asking what kind of ship you are. Right, I think that's what it is. So, um, okay, we can we can we can do that. We'll do we'll do a quick example of that. Uh, so yes, just uh, bear with me. I, I am launching the VM. I would have launched it ahead of time, but I uh, I had to restart my computer between classes because I just came out of the ethics class that uh, I did. So we got 58 seconds. So in the meantime, I can do some code here. So let's talk about. Um, Vectors first and virtuals. What is easier to do? Let's do let's do vectors first. Uh, what is a vector? Okay, so a vector is another way of storing data. Kind of like it's actually an array. It's just an array with some extra features added to it. We know that the limitation of an array is that you cannot make it bigger once you declare a size, right? Do you still do the extra credit? Yes, I do. So the channel points will work for that. Yes. So just just I will inc I will make the the number of points bigger so that I don't get a request every day, but and then maybe near the end of the semester, I'll go make it back down. But yes, finally you can speak. So I guess the 10 minutes went by, so hello. <laughs> so yes. Um, okay, so vectors. I actually have some code that I can show you for vectors and walk you through that. I think if we do that, it'll make it a little bit faster. By the way, sometimes I'm looking here because I have multiple monitors and so I, I, I move around. So I'll always try to look at the camera, but sometimes it's difficult when I have different things going on at different places. Um, so this here is how I teach 202 actually. So I have my I have a I, a IDE visual code, I have a terminal and then I have files. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to uh, to go ahead and look at vectors because I know I, I know that I did a, a code on vectors at some point. Anime sequel. <laughs> I think we did some 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 students wanted an example on the anime. Uh, maybe the one that says review might be useful. I think we did inheritance and they, they used anime character names for the inheritance. Here we go. This is vectors. Perfect. So uh, typically, by the way, I ask you guys to give me stuff for examples. And so, you know, people said anime in that case. So, yes. Timestamp vectors. Well, you should do the timestamps on YouTube, not on Twitch. But yes, <laughs> okay, um, all right. So vectors, so I have the code here, but let me introduce how vectors work. So again, vectors are like arrays. They're arrays, but they're templated actually. That's one difference. Templates, remember, is basically when you have a piece of code, you typically have to declare a variable, the type. So you have it's an integer, a double, a float, or a string, or whatnot. When you make a templated variable, it can be whatever you want whatever class you want or whatever built-in data type you want. It's only resolved when you actually create the variable. So you can make a templated function that is like called add, which will take two variables and, and put the plus operator between them, which typically represents add. However, in the case of two strings, it can be concatenation, right? So you concatenate in terms of strings. How <coughs> Sorry. However, with operator overloading, you could actually uh, make it do anything you want, right? As long as it's still a binary operation because the plus is a binary operator versus, for example, the not symbol, which is unary, right? And so ultimately, templates are, are useful to, to not have to write the same code 50,000 times, okay? So the first thing about temp uh, vectors is that they're templated because that's nice. That way we can make an array of strings, an array of, of ints, whatever it is that we want to make, we can do it with a vector. The second part about vectors is that they are arrays, but they have a lot of extra features. The biggest one of them all is they have a function called pushback, which you see right here where it says a pushback seven on line 23, 24, and so on. What that does is it inserts or appends to the end of the array an item of the type that the vector is. In this case, I'm making a vector of integers, which means that it can star, store integers. And so by saying a pushback seven, I am saying, please insert to my vector, which is again, just an array, 
at the end of it, a seven. Now, here's the beautiful part. Normally with an array, you gotta, you gotta tell it where to insert, right? And you hope that there's space. If there isn't, well, you know, if it's full and you're trying to put something else, you gotta like write code to resize it and do a bunch of relatively, uh, not bad, because it's just nice to do it, but it's a, a hindrance per se. It's annoying to have to code basic stuff like that, right? Like, you know, it's, a, it's annoying. So with this, you don't have to worry about any of that. It all happens behind the scenes. There is resizing going on. Yes, it's an array at the end of the day. It's dynamically allocated. So there might be some copying around and there's some, there's some magic going on behind the scenes. But the point is that as a programmer, I don't need to worry about that. All I want is to have a, an array that I can keep putting things in, kind of like a linked list, but still. So it just makes your life so much easier. Where do we ask questions in here? Uh, there are many places to ask questions. If you're watching live, you can definitely drop me a question on, on the Twitch and I'll see it here and I'll answer it. You can stop me at any time and do that. Alternatively, if you're watching on YouTube, you can um, you can leave a comment on YouTube and I'll try to monitor those comments and uh, answer there, I suppose. Or you can send me an email or, uh, or, or send me a message on Canvas. Um, um, you can technically send me a direct message on Discord as well. We're not, you know, we had the discussion about Discord no longer really being uh, or ever really being a required part of the class, but I just made it make sure that it's no, it, to, to clarify that it's not required. And that uh, if you would like to message me there, you can, but it is not something that I'm actively moderating. So be warned of the content there, you know, there, there it, it is, it is, uh, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm doing six classes, so I don't have time to actively police that server. But if somebody does do something bad to you, please go ahead and tell me and, uh, and or, 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 you know, contact someone about it. But yeah, uh, if you're having problems with the stream, I don't know what to tell you. I do have a monitor here beneath me that is um, telling me the quality of the stream, like here. And if it goes down, I see that and I try to pause because that means there's usually a delay. My other recommendation is yes, lower the stream quality or change the type of the stream to uh, add, add the delay in exchange of quality. Worst, worst case scenario, like I said, I am recording on YouTube, but I would hate to see you go because there's issues with this stream. So the whole using, using, using Twitch is that it's more reliable than WebEx in my experience. Does a vector consist of only one data type? It is a, what they call a homogenous uh, data structure, which means that it's only one data type. You can get around that, and make it like a, a, a hetero, hetero, heterogeneous data structure, but um, you have to use some nasty pointer stuff for that. Like you might, you have to make the the uh, well. One of the non least nasty ways of doing it is you can make a superclass and make the vector be pointers of the superclass, and then derive objects from that class into like base, you know, derived classes, and then just have them all stored in the same vector. With you know that that polymorphism slash up and down casting. You can do that, but they have to have a common class. Or if you really want to go crazy, you could just make them be pointers and then do some nasty casting and store whatever, any kind of data from that pointer, like a void pointer basically, but on, on not recommended at all. Can you store arrays in the vector? Well, you can't store the array, but you can store a pointer to an array. So you could have, I, I, could, I, I mean, I can code that for you really fast. You can, and I believe that's kind of how the assignment is done. You can you can you can sort pointers in an array, and that pointer can point to anything, including a single data or an array of data. So yes, you would just make a you know if it, if it's a if the vector is going to be a, pointing to little arrays of integers, I would add a little asterisk between the t and the less right here. I would make that basically that, and now it would be an array of pointers, and I can store arrays in there. If you want to store arrays of arrays in there and whatnot, then you just keep adding asterisks there and add another level of indirection. So yes. Um, okay. Uh, anything else that we have? I don't see any other questions. Uh, but please, you know, sometimes I miss the questions because I'm talking. If I do, just just like repeat the question. But uh, and I'll, I'll get to you. Okay. So I told you what vectors are, but how do we actually like code one? Good question. <laughs> so you type in the word vector, but to do that, you have to include a library called vectors. Well, vector, not vectors. And then uh, once you include that. You have access to the vector class, which is basically vector. And then this is a syntax for writing a template, which you put the less than and greater than sign. And inside, you're going to put the data type of what your vector is. Again, 
You can make a vector of a vector, by the way. Like I could make vectors inside of other vectors, like vector inception. That's pretty cool too. But uh, I recommend if you do that, that you're using pointers and not actually the actual data itself because it can get pretty big and, and relatively scary in terms of how the code looks. So anyways, we go ahead and do that. And then um, you got a name, you know, every single variable in C++ has to have a name. Just as a quick 135 refresher, the name cannot start with a number. It can be an alpha character from like A to Z, uppercase or lowercase. Uh, any, it could be an underscore as well, but it cannot start with a number. Now for the second character and on, it can be alphanumeric. So I can have letters and numbers, but just not the first character, okay? Otherwise you get a compiler error, which then you're like, oh, I forgot. And then you just remember and everybody goes on with their happy lives. How do you insert into a vector is you use the famous pushback function, which kind of should ring a bell to the concept of stacks and queues. You know, stack, you push things in. That's kind of pushing in the back of it. That's kind of where they, where they got that name from. So that's all it's doing. Uh, in this case, you can push into the vector. I am pushing a literal here, which I believe is con also called an R value because the L value is the ones that are constant. Actually, in, boy, in that case, this would be an L value. Hmm. It's been a while since I talked about that. If you watch my summer videos, I'll probably remember. But yeah, anyways, this is a literal. That's the other way of calling it. We're pushing a literal here. This is a variable. What you're doing, by the way, when you're doing pushback is you're making a copy of the data, okay? So you're passing by value per se. You're not passing by reference. It's, a, it's sort of an important thing to know because if you're trying to pass like a, like a, well, if you were trying to pass a literal by reference, that would break things down unless you pass it as a constant, you know? So yeah. So it's making a copy of the data, okay? It's an important thing to know. You can also pass an entire function because this function returns an integer or a, a, a something. I think it's an integer. Um, where is foo? Here's foo, yeah, integer, okay. So um, yeah, how do you traverse a vector? You can traverse a vector like you would in any array with the same syntax, just imagine it's an array. And if you wanna know the size of the vector, you can use a function called size. That should ring a bell to the string class. Remember the string class has a size variable to it, I think, or length variable, I think, or in other languages it's called size. I don't remember in C++ if it's called size. It might be length, or I think it's both actually. But uh, yeah, so basically you can get the size of a vector that way. You don't need to keep track of it like you would with a regular array. So that's very nice and convenient. Of course, internally that is happening because probably when you do a pushback, it increases a little counter and so on. So that is how you keep size of it. So if you want to print it out, you can just do your old school for loop. Just do like for int i is equal to zero, i is less than the size essentially here, i plus plus. And then to access each element, just the same syntax as any other array. Just the variable name, which is a in this case, the array index operators, which is the square brackets, and then the i. What is the difference between size and length? I do believe that they are the same. I do believe. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they are the same. Um, a quick Google search would tell us if, if I'm wrong. So let's see. Vector size versus length. Length is how many elements are being used in the array, whereas capacity, but that's capacity, is how many elements were allocated in memory. So that's not really related to us. Let's see size. Number of elements in the container. So I think they're the same. Yeah, no, it is actually very true. There is no reason to use arrays over vectors. Um, unless I guess you want to be hardcore about memory and like really, because like, here's the thing, a vector can just keep growing. I guess an array, you can have more control over the memory, but there are functions with vectors. Like I'm just giving you the very brief introduction into vectors. But if you go on geeks for geeks vectors, like if you Google that, I think I might have a link on the canvas and if not, I'll add one. There's like 50 functions for the vector class. You can really manipulate vectors in tons of ways. So like, basically, yes, I would say that you probably don't want to use arrays unless you have a real, like, like amazing idea up to the why. Is line 27 a for each loop? Yes, yes, I was actually gonna go for that. I, I didn't. I wanted to go over the basic for loop first and then go to that one, so. But uh, I'm, glad you, you, I'm glad you bring that up because now I can segue to that discussion. <laughs> so this is how you would normally do your for, your for loops. However, depending on if you took me or somebody else, you, we may not have gone over this type of for loop. This is called the range for loop and it's very popular in languages like Python. Oh, here we have our first glitch of the system. I saw for a second that the internet went down. So it might have frozen for a minute. So uh, yes, we should be back up now. 
By the way, if it ever freezes, just bear with it. Typically, it doesn't go for more than a minute, and then it comes back. And if you miss something out, again, I am recording locally, so uh, I should, you know, you sh it should be high quality once I put it on YouTube. So we're allowed to use vectors in our assignments, right? Since CS2 2 we're prohibited to use vectors. Oof. Well, I mean, to be fair, I did prohibit vector usage in my class when I was teaching them how to use dynamic allocation because I wanted to make sure they know how to dynamically allocate an array. Um, ah, see, we have another little hip hiccup. Okay, it's back now. But uh, no, you, uh, let's put it this way. Unless I forbid it, it's allowed. So it flips around. Here, you're free to use them unless I tell you not to use them, which frankly, I think the only assignment where I don't want you to use them is the one where I'm trying to make you code a link list instead because I want you to code a link list. But yes, it's a free country in this class to use uh, vectors if you it would so desire, which you really should, to be honest. Like you really, really should use vectors. It's a, it's a, it's, you code faster. And at the end of the day, that's that's good. You know, get free more more free time to play video games and stuff, right? Or to work out and be healthy. <laughs> so yeah, um, and yes, I do believe you can use vectors in assignment one. In fact, I think my solution for us for vector one, for vector one, <laughs> my solution for assignment one uses vectors. So yes, in fact, here I'm gonna I'm gonna do a sneak peek into my solution of assignment one. Um, just to uh, just to see it, I want to see it because I haven't seen it since last semester actually. And I was gonna make a new assignment one, but I was like, no, I have I have to prepare for 301 since I just I got I got assigned to that. So I was like, I'll just uh, I'll just reuse this. It's a nice assignment. I actually don't think it's is that hard compared to old first assignments in 302. Like my old assignment for 302 was to make a matrix that was made basically like a like a like a link list that had chains all over the place and. Uh, do matrix multiplication oh no matrix addition and subtraction with it and people just like exploded you know that's the first assignment they're like oh my god it's <laughs> it's crazy and it was kind of crazy so I, I sympathize all right so i'm going to open the code i um uh, i hope it doesn't open it on the other screen oh oh god oh gosh oh gosh hold on a second i think it might so let me uh let me do a, a scene transfer for a second so i don't so i don't leak the code yeah it would have leaked it <laughs> so Hold on a second. Okay, so I'm looking at my code. I am using file streams. Maybe that might be something good to quickly go over. And uh, oh, here's the virtual. So I am using what am I? And then I'm looking for vectors. The vectors probably when I store the data, right? Because there's a, there's a there's a file name. By the way, I got that file name from the internet. So uh, it's just the name of ships. So so please don't. Uh, I did not make that, so hopefully there's nothing like weird names of ships and, stuff and whatnot in there. By the way, there's construction going on behind me, so I really, um, I apologize if you guys can hear that. They There was construction the week before, the last week of, of the summer, and then literally they paused for the week of classes off, and now they literally started today again. Like, like the, perf the timing is just like, wow. So, yeah. Um, I am looking. I can't find me using vectors. int fleet size oh no i dynamically allocated it i thought i used vectors for this one but i dynamically allocated the array so there there's that i did it that way i have sys eternal fleet i gets new system class star destroyer name list it's a function call or actually the constructor is a pass so yeah i guess i use i i i, I think Assignment three is when I made them use vector, so I guess I, that's when I did the vector version of this. So let's switch back to that now. Uh, it was a good review of pointers and info. I'm glad because, like, if there is one thing in this class that we're going to use a lot, is pointers. Like, when we get to trees, graphs, it's like pointers are the heart of them. Like, it's just it's just pointers. Like, everything is pointers and recursion sometimes. Uh, our code has to run on Sally, right? Yes, it does have to run in Sally, indeed. When we use vectors, do we have to clear memory? Uh, good question. So um, if you're just inserting into the vector, like push back, and it's a pointer, 
Well, okay. If it's a if it's a value itself, like if you're not storing pointers in the vector, it's okay. However, if you're storing pointers in the vector and you make those pointers point to something and or like dynamically allocate what they're pointing to, then you could potentially have memory leaks in that case. Let me see if I can I can code up a quick example of that. Um, and that also helps to refresh pointers, which frankly is one of the things that I was expecting uh, for you guys to basically to uh, to bring up as a review topic, because pointers is what people have a, a hard time with. This might be the only day really that we're gonna really code a lot, uh, but I mean it's okay if we spend the full day reviewing. By the way, um, we should be fine. So if, you know, no, I gotta pull the cable here. Okay, include IS stream using the namespace std. Probably include vectors as well. Our code has to run say that's what I said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so suppose I want to make a vector of pointers. Okay? And so let's say that I want that pointer to point to an integer. So like I have an integer v, but I also have an integer uh, PTR, which has a has an integer in it, dynamically allocated, and this is just a number. And then you know PTR gets 22. Okay, so now let's go ahead and insert these two into our vector. So it will do a dot push back. And then in the case of the pointer, I can just do PTR because I'm passing the address. But in the case of the literal, I have to use the address off operator like that. Okay. And finally, this is the one that's going to cause problems, as you will see, is we are going to dynamically allocate something as we put it in here. Push back. <laughs> um, new int like that. Okay. So that's dynamically allocating an integer and returning the address there because new returns that address. But uh, it doesn't have anything valuable in it. So I have to then go ahead and manually set it. Uh, there might be a way to do this in one of the code, but I can't think of it immediately. So that'll be zero, one, and two. So that would be in spot two. So two gets uh, two, one, twelve. Okay, sure. These are random numbers. So, okay. So now let's go ahead and talk about that range for loop as a way of printing it out. So this is another way of writing a loop then the I mean you don't have to use this loop at all you can stick to the loop that you know but it's good to know this loop so this th th this uh, is a very much like Python and then Python is called the uh, like when you say for a and R in Python and R is a, is, a, is a list and a is an individual variable that's going to basically store each item of the list as it iterates through the list so that's kind of what's happening here so what's happening here is I have my vector here and what I'm gonna do is I want to iterate or go through each of the elements of the vector one by one and I'm going to store temporarily a copy of that spot in the array in this temporary variable called I. You might ask yourself what this auto is if you've never seen it, fear not. It's just shorthand when I don't feel like writing the type of the variable I. Now I always have to have a type, okay? So you know I can't do something like this. I can't say auto v, auto v and then just declare that because that variable has no type and C++ demands you to have a type when you declare a variable. However, if I say auto v gets 11111, then the compiler can resolve that v should be an integer, right? So that is kind of what is happening here. It can resolve the type based on what the vector is made up of, which in this case is integers, okay? And since we went ahead and the created another thing let's just go ahead and push it back as well so a dot push back v okay is the cs department taking match 51 of the curriculum um you're putting me on the spot by asking me that on live how about you ask me that privately and i'll give you a straight answer for that just because i don't know if i am allowed to publicly disclose that information on on, on the stream so but it is definitely a good question that you should ask me and I'll, I'll make sure that I can answer it before giving you the answer. <laughs> but hey, hey, it's a legitimate question to have. So yes, definitely send me a DM on that. Um, uh, uh, you know, email or direct message or Canvas message or whatever you want. So yes. Um, okay. So anyways, um, 
going going back to this that is what, how auto works if you've never seen autos again you don't ever have to use autos in your life it's more for like if i write in the skeleton code then then at least you recognize what is happening there so nobody panics when they see the word auto so anyways what this is the, let's talk about why you have an ampersand there can you hear the massive vibration i hope not because literally the floor is vibrating right now yeah but okay so um it's so distracting so, you can hear i'm so sorry guys i i apologize for that but uh <laughs> it's bass. It's literally bass. If I could, if I could bring the microphone to the floor, you'd be like, there's like humming. Like, so yeah. So, um, but hey, hey, it's 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 you know they're paving the road, so that's 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 nice for me because the roads will be nice, and those guys have jobs, so it's a great thing for the people. So yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Apologies, but thank you. Okay. So going back to this, we have the for loop here, and we have the auto, and what is going to happen is every time. That the for loop runs it's going to extract a copy of each of the elements in the array or vector a the ampersand is because it would normally make a copy of them but if we ever wanted to modify the vector in the for loop in that case we would want to pass it it's kind of like passing by reference versus passing by value and by putting an ampersand there i have the ability to change it now in this case it actually doesn't matter because i'm just printing out the array but hey let's try to change it in a minute and you'll see that in that case it would make a difference because otherwise it wouldn't actually change the vector itself okay i am using vector and array interchangeably but i am talking about the vector okay so uh rtx boys next stream what's rtx i don't know but my computer is already kind of like maxing out on cpu usage just for the screen i gotta upgrade my processor it's a it's an i7 6700k so yeah, drink some water. The, the green screen is actually like processing. But I think the biggest processing complaint is not the green screen. It's actually the uh, compression for the video that I'm recording locally. That is actually what's uh, using most of the processing power. But okay, so let's go ahead and uh, and run this run this code and see what happens. Okay, uh, especially memory leak wise. Uh, saved. Okay, let's try it again. So V does not name a type. V does not name a type, but these are this is an integer here. Ah, why is it complaining about that one? Hmm. I don't know why it's complaining because I know that that's an integer. Oh, I know why. I'm not compiling an eleven. So yeah, make sure you compile C plus plus eleven. Uh, Sally by default compiles C plus plus eleven. In my case, though. Uh, it's an old VM, so it doesn't compile in 11. So if you don't compile with C++11, you're not going to get autos to work, range-based for loops, a bunch of other really cool things, actually. So just compile with 11. And by the way, whenever you submit an assignment, and it, if it ever requires like C++17 or something, just put that as a comment in the assignment submission so that the TA knows to run the, uh, the solution to compile it using C++17 or whatever it, compile flags may be required. Don't, don't require them to use that permissive because that's like bad coding techniques anyways. But yeah, um, where is it complaining? So it is saying, oh, I see. Yeah, this is really bad because that's a pointer. So I gotta dereference it, right? Because 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 the array, the vector is made up of pointers, not literal. So I gotta dereference that value. So that's why I was complaining about that. Okay. And then finally, invariant conversion from that. Okay, so also this one needs this is this is being this is a, I'm passing in a number, but this is a this is an, a vector of pointers. So I gotta pass in a address, which is the address of that number. So I was that error as well. Okay, so now we got it. What are auto variables? As I was saying, auto variables are basically a shorthand way of, of writing declaring your variables. If you don't want to type the word int or string or anything in front of a variable, what happens when you do auto is it is deduced by the compiler at compile time, but it has to be the deductible per se. So if I write the word auto v and just make a declaration, then the compiler has no idea what kind of data it should store in v, and they will not let you. However, when you say auto v equals 1111, it sees that 1111 is an integer, so it knows to make v an integer. So it's it's like lazy man's writing of a variable declaration. Now it's arguable whether that's actually better or not, faster or not. Where it's really useful is in the case of the range-based for loop, because there it's it's very like copy-pastable code in the sense that 
I don't have to worry that, that what the type of the vector is because auto will take care of that for me. Absolutely, yes. I could replace the word auto with int in the for loop and it would work just fine. In fact, how about we, we uh, how about we do that? Let's, let's make two of them. Let's make one of them that has auto and then let's make one of them that has integer. The one with the integer, I'm going to pass by, uh, by, uh, by value. By the way, this is actually not going to work because these are addresses. So I have to put a, I, have to, I think I have to put a dereferencer on both of these like that because these are integers. So I just caught that. But yes, uh, invalid conversion from int to int pointer. Uh, int to int pointer. Okay, so int pointer then. Okay, there we go. And maybe we put an end line between these so that you can see them better. Okay, so as you can see, oh, that, that bothers me. <laughs> I wanna, I don't like having that like that. So it works, but I just, it looks pretty this way. So as you can see, both work with integer and without integer, okay? But uh, which one do you prefer better to write? It's up to you. I prefer the auto one because I don't like, I, I you, you saw me lie, make a mistake because I forgot the asterisk, right? I don't have to worry about that too much with the auto. It, hand, it, it handles it better than I could. So uh, that's why I, I like the, uh, that's why I like the auto. And you might see it in my skeleton code sometimes. So yes, but okay. So um, let's actually see the reason why we're doing this code. Because the question was how we deal with memory. Let's run Valgrind and see if we have memory leaks. And uh, hint, hint, very likely that we do. Well, in general we do because we never deallocated anything. So we have definitely a oh, bunch of memory leaks here. Dot slash a dot out, there we go. So we have eight bytes lost, eight bytes in two blocks lost, okay? So the auto needs the ampersand? I don't think it does actually. It, it doesn't need it necessarily, as far as I know. But you, you typically want to put it. But here, let's test it. Yeah, see, it doesn't need it. And then uh, it runs the same. So here's the output. So it doesn't need it. But then you're passing by value versus by reference, which which doesn't really matter much for pointers because they're pointers. But if this was literals that you were storing in there, not literals, but like actual data that you're storing there instead of pointers, then it would matter. Um, I'll show you an example of that really fast, actually. Maybe maybe before I before we fix the memory leaks, let's do that. So yeah, very fast we'll do that. So like, let's make another vector of just regular integers. Or maybe not integers, because we keep using integers. Let's do cars. And we'll call it C, I guess. So we can put C dot push back H. I was gonna write hello world, but I think that's gonna take a little bit too long. So, you know, normally I would, uh, I would make this code look prettier, but I'm really just kind of speeding through to get the most content out in the time that we have, right? So forgive the nasty looking code, so essentially. But okay, so here we got a uh, hello, almost a, a hello message there. And so now let's go ahead and write a for loop that would basically print that out. So we can say for auto, uh, and just actually just auto, I C and then C out I and then Actually, no spaces or anything, but maybe just an end line afterwards. I don't need the curly brackets because the for loop is just one line of code. Overflow. Okay. I don't know why that's giving me a warning, but uh, we are just going to ignore that and hope for the best. Oh, it has an. Oh, I see. I have that. Yeah, that's why it's an overflow. <laughs> okay. So uh, it says hello. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. That's the nice thing about people live. You guys can help me out. This time I caught it myself, but like a lot of times you guys will catch it before I do, which is a blessing to have. So yes, good catch, guys. Good catch. I, I do appreciate the help. And so okay. By the way, how many people do we have watching? I I, I don't have, I don't have my my app open to see how many people are alive. Um. So I'm curious. Let me know. Put on chat how many how many viewers do we have? Forty seven. Oh my gosh. That's that's like almost the entire class. Wow. If we get, I, I, I'm already Twitch affiliate, but if we get like 75, I could become Twitch, Twitch, what do you call it? Twitch partner or something. <laughs> oh, well, well, thanks for coming guys. Cool. But uh, all right. Great. Hype train. <laughs> that's the most that I've, I think I might've ever had. I, I don't know. When I was doing the three sections of 302 over the spring, we might've kind of matched that at some point. I don't know. But uh, I feel like it's gonna go down from here. This is both sections, yes. 
So we do have like 60 people total. But uh, 47 out of 60 is a huge amount. <laughs> is he at the same time as me? That's weird that they made that would have made two. But uh, sure. If we get 75, then I guess if I can do that for like X amount of hours, I become a Twitch partner, which gives me nothing at all. But I guess it's kind of cool. So yeah, he's probably doing 202 or something. But uh, yes, I do know Ben Cisneros and, and Jimmy and Rabasco. And I think some of the other GAs are doing Twitch. So yeah, Jimmy's a great person. So anyways, all right. So now I want to show you what happens here if I try to modify the variables, okay? Because that's kind of what, what I'm more interested upon. So before I print out the stuff, I am going to change i by doing plus one. So like i equals i plus one, which by the way, can be shorthanded for i plus equals one, right? So this should shift all the letters one, one, one letter upper in the alphabet. So like A, B, C, D, E, H, G. So H will become G, E will become F, L will become M, and then O would become P. So however, will it work? And the answer I, I, I personally hope is no, for what I'm trying to make a point. As you can see, it does not work. Because, as I said, the range based for loop copies each of the values in the array, or vector, I said, a vector, into the temporary variable i. So if you're modifying something with the range based for loop, it doesn't affect it. It's just a local copy. It's like if you were passing by value into a function. And that is why the ampersand is necessary. So that now you can modify the actual data. So if I run this again, well, compile it first, you will see here that now it actually, oh, like h i not hg so <laughs> my alphabet failed but yes i f m p or whatever so yes they, they, as you can see that is a better example of the difference between putting the ampersand and not putting the ampersand in the for loop okay so hopefully that clears that up with the pointers is different because we're getting an address so it doesn't really matter much okay so um yes so now going back to the problem that we have we have memory leaks right how do how what here's some 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 tips about how to go on about memory leaks okay so one of the ways to go on about memory leaks is to first of all be patient and hope for the best but once you kind of get past the initial shock of like oh no memory leaks then you should kind of try to do the math and say how many bytes lost and the number of blocks typically the number of blocks is the number of variables that have memory leaks in them if you have an array, then that then then um, you can figure out if like your array is aside 50 and you have 50 blocks of memory leak, more than likely you forgot to deallocate the array. So it's this kind of detective work that you have to do to figure that out. And so in this case, we have eight bytes. That's suspicious. That's the size of a double or two integers. So that already tells me that I have memory leaks probably in integers because two integers because that's what I'm dealing with. If it was like single bytes in there, then they would probably have to do with the cars, but it's not the cars. And so one of the memory leaks, of course, is right here. You know, I am allocating this, and then the other one is inside the vector. So what could be one way to, to solve this kind of quickly? And the answer is I could go through the vector and delete things. Because here's the thing, when I'm storing things into the vector directly as I'm doing with the car vector, even though, yes, this is dynamically allocated, it, it does garbage collection on its own and I don't have to worry about any of that deallocation. It's only a problem when I'm doing a vector of pointers because then it's not going to deallocate what the pointers are pointing to when the destructor gets called. And so in this case, I have to go ahead and myself delete that and myself delete that. So this one's easy because I can just go ahead and put at the end of the code like delete PTR and that takes care of that one. This one is a lot trickier to delete. Like, how do I actually, here's the lead to PTR, by the way, I didn't say that. This is the one that's like, how do I deal with this? So my recommendation is get rid of the delete PTR and just run through the thing and delete everything. But then you're gonna run to another problem because this vector has a mixture of both dynamically allocated stuff and static stuff like these Bs. So it's quite a, it's quite a tricky problem here. My recommendation is to never, never do this. Never mix like a, you know regular static stuff versus dynamically allocated variables in the same vector list. So um, how do we solve this? I mean, 
yes, I could. I, one way to solve it is I could just manually access uh, A2 and call delete on that. So like, here's here's the quick and dirty way of doing it. But it's, a, it's not a general solution per se. I could do this, and that would fix my memory leaks. But it's not really going to kind of be a general solution to apply to other problems. See, memory leaks are solved. No errors. No context or no errors from no context. How to delete them? How to how to fix a problem like this when you have things mixed up? Like you have both dynamic and static. Um, you. There's no easy way to do that. At least something that will work in every possible machine that runs this code. So um, I guess don't do it. Yeah, don't don't mix things because otherwise, yeah, I don't know because there's no way you could probe memory easily and see what it's pointing to. Um, yeah. Well, yes, but how will you check that? There's probably some functions that are, can check the memory location to see if it's in the heap or in the stack, but I don't think those would, those would be those would be hardware de not dependent, so they wouldn't be they wouldn't be really portable between machines, you know. So um, let's let me Google. I'm curious uh, how to check if a pointer is pointing to dynamic or stack static static allocated memory you can't know this so stack overflow take it with a grain of salt you can't know this this is by definition of your function prefer using smart pointers which yes that would that would be one way of doing it or you have to make pretty clear in your function documentation that takes ownership over the function you pass so there is, and then this, I think the second answer is better. There is no portable way to find out if a pointer is pointing to dynamically allocated memory or statically allocated memory. It might be possible to deduct this information by carefully checking if the pointer points to one of the data or BSS segments of any of the libraries and shared libraries. So yeah, I, like I said, I don't think there's an easy way of doing that. Uh, so don't mix, don't mix the two. Here's, here's where I was reading that from. But you can keep track to which index pointer to save to. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Like, I mean, I know in two is that one. So yes, you can do that. But, you know, that involves like what I would consider to be hard coding something, which is not ideal. Um, frankly, best solution is just don't mix things around like I did. Either make things dynamic or static. Don't, don't mix and match inside the same data structure. So, uh, yeah. So anyways, going to virtuals now. Let's do virtuals next. Um, I mean, I don't know. What happens if I paste this on the... What happens if I paste this on Twitch? Is it gonna like totally screw it up? Let's just try. Reach character limit of 500. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Oh, and it also censored it apparently. There must be some, some word there that looks like profanity or something. But, uh, oh, I see what I see what it is. So I, I might try to upload it after class. But I mean, this is so basic. Here, you could just like take a screenshot too on the YouTube video, but I'll try my best. I'll, I'll try to put this as a comment on the YouTube link or something. But uh, yeah. Okay, so let me, um, let me comment out this code for now so that I can show you virtuals, okay? Let me just look very briefly at, the, at, the, at this assignment again to see in what context I'm using virtuals. And by the way, since the assignment is Star Wars related, I guess we should do the Star Wars background. So what is the quote? At last, the work of generations is complete. The great error is corrected. The day of victory is at hand. The day of revenge, the day of the Sith. So, yes, that's that's the quote. So be it, Jedi. It's like, here's the solution of the assignment. I'm like, you want this, don't you? Like, that's what he says, right? So it's like, here's a skeleton code. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let me just control that virtual. Okay, so it is a one on my function. So I have the entity class, which then gets inherited, or sorry, gets derived. Well, it does get inherited too. Um, gets inherited by navigation tower, system class star destroyer, resurgent class star destroyer. So, okay, cool. All right, okay, so 
that is a very cool concept that is going to like literally be the heart and soul of the final project this whole like super class derived into multiple classes so like it's kind of important that we make sure we follow we understand it by the way i think i have publicly released the final project on canvas already so if you're curious you can click there but if you're watching i would wait until the end i guess like you know finish watching the class don't ddos my troll trying to log into canvas at once so uh okay so the the most basic way to to, to describe virtuals is to pose a situation where you would need them okay so the virtual assignment has to actually return something right it is not just a function name equals zero um okay i, I think we got to clarify what that even means in the first place because that because i think it kind of lost there so here's the thing when you make a class you know let's say we have a class a and then we have class b and class c okay what time does the class end? 5.15? So we're, we're, we got, we got, yeah, we have enough time. Cool. So this will be pretty much, we'll pretty much save 302 content till next week and just spend the rest of the class reviewing. Yes, thank you. Cool. So we got 50, 25 minutes. That's, that's pretty long time. We should be able to get through this. So, okay. So I'm actually going to in, in, inherit publicly to make things easier. I should have made these structs to be honest. But yes, let's do a little bit of class inheritance, okay? So if you guys remember your inheritance, you make a super class, and then you want to take that content and expand upon it in your derived classes, right? The whole purpose of inheritance is to save rewriting code and copy pasting code. If I make a class and I love this class, it's amazing, it's the best class ever, and now you want to make the same class but like with something extra, instead of copying and pasting the class, putting it in a different name, and then adding the extra variable, you can use inheritance to do that, and it makes the code easier to maintain as well. So that's kind of the, uh, the origins of why inheritance is a thing. Fun fact, multiple inheritance is something you can do in C++, but not all languages. Java does not allow multiple inheritance, by the way. So just a little fun fact there. So yeah, I'm not much of a Java coder, so please don't ask me for beyond that. Uh, ben is though. So when you take 326, you can drain questions on Java to him. In fact, the projects in that class are in, in 326, or Dr. Peterson as well. So he's, uh, he's Ben's like leader or what do you call it? No, not leader. <laughs> that sounds weird. Uh, advisor. He's been advisor. Yes. Leader sounds like he's a part of a cult or something. So the CS cult. Cult. Cult? Is it cult or cult? I don't know how you pronounce that. But yeah, okay. So let's say that we have a, a super class and this class is like our entity class in the assignment. So this class has a variable X on it. Okay. And maybe it has a variable Y. And yeah, that's it. And again, we got, we're going to make life easy, just make everything public. I don't, don't want to have to do getters and setters and like, you know, just waste time using that. And by the way, you, again, I don't really code in this class, but I use the same variable names like 50,000 times. X, Y, Z, I, J, K, A, B, C. I'm not creative at all. In fact, I use, I literally, I use A, B, C there and X, Y here. So, yes. So, interesting. So, anyways, suppose that I want to have class B have X and Y, but it's gonna have a Z in it, okay? And actually, it, let's just have class A have one variable, because then I can maybe have the Y here and the Z, because my creativity ends at Z. I don't know what to put after that, so I have to stick with three variables only, you know, unfortunately. So, um, okay, let's, uh, so, so, so now let's go ahead and write a small main function, just to make sure that we're all on the same page with basic inheritance where we make an object of each of these classes. We, we are going to instantiate the class by creating an object of it, okay? So instantiate the class, that's the uh, proper terminology. You know, this is great for me because I'm supposed to teach this tomorrow. I mean, not all of this, but like start teaching 202 tomorrow, so yeah. All right, so um, let's go ahead and make an AA. Surprise, surprise on the originality of the variable names. CC and BC. Or B, and CC, okay? And so, just to make sure, again, we're on the same page, any of these variables have an X to them. So I can do AX, you know, I can do AX gets five, four or five, whatever. Uh, BX gets three and CX gets two. I can, with B, have a Y that gets one. And with a Z, or sorry, with C, I can have a Z. That's a tongue twister right there. Okay, so I can do that because they all share an X to them. But in addition to that, B has a Y and C has a Z. Okay, so uh, being, being a cis major is being part of a cult. 
interesting way of, of, of stating that. Uh, oh yes, yeah, so that's the other thing. I, I always forget this when I'm when I'm coding classes. The semicolon is a vein of my existence at the end of the classes. I I don't like that that's there. I, I would like to have a discussion with the people that made the compiler as to the why that's necessary. And they will then probably give me the really good reason not to feel guilty, but I would still complain. <laughs> so yes, okay. So it works, it compiles. I mean, if I run it, nothing's gonna happen, as you see, because like I don't see out anything. But the fact that it compiles and runs means that this is legal code, right? So yeah. Kind of dangerous thing to say, but you know, if it compiles, it must be working. It's a very, very, uh, um, you know, bad. I forgot the right term for that. It's very uh, is it cocky. Would be the right term. It's a very cocky thing to say. I don't know if the cocky is the thing. Naive. It's a very naive thing to say because just because something compiles, it just means it's syntactically correct, but not necessarily semantically correct, right? Big thing between syntax and semantics. Questionable. Yes, that's that's a good term. Okay. So now here's the thing. Suppose that as a developer, I am the, 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 these classes actually stand for something. Guess what? Class A is not just A, it's actually an animal. And so in reality, B is a type of animal, in this case it's a bat, and C is a cat. And I did not prepare that, but I am so happy that I found words that start with that letter each. So now this whole thing has a whole different purpose and meaning to this, right? Because I am saying that there's a class called animal, and then I have a bat and a cat, which are both animals, right? You know, when you say inheritance, you're, you, you say it is a, it's, it's a property. So we, when you're talking about inheritance and you're saying, when you're trying to decide whether you should inherit something or do aggregation, what's aggregation really fast? That's like if I went ahead and created an object here of A, that's aggregation rather than inheritance. You don't, you typically do one or the other. The, how you decide that is you think about the class and you're like, is this class, is this a, another class or does it have another class in it? And you, when you try to think of that in like English terms, are you saying, is a bat an animal or does a bat have an animal? And the answer is a bat is an animal, right? That's why you inherit it. If in the if you if you if you, were, if you had a class called farm and then there was bats and cats in there, you wouldn't inherit them because you're not saying a farm is a bat. You say a farm has a bat. And I guess I don't know if there's such a thing as a bat farms. I guess Batman might have that. I don't know. But uh, yeah. So Going back to this, and I, I'm, I'm really just trying to kind of just throw so much information at you from 202 in, in way, one way or the other, but uh, that's why I'm, I'm just going all over the place, things that I think might be useful to you or refresher. So anyways, now that we have this, would you agree with me that it doesn't make sense to allow a user, an end user, and by that I mean a coder that is dealing with my library that I'm creating, this animal library, it doesn't make sense for them to create an object of animal because there's no such thing as an animal. There's a bat, there's a cat, but there's no animal. That's just a generic term that covers all our different animals, right? And so in that case, I argue that we should not allow the developer to code an animal object, okay? How do we stop them from doing that? The way that we stop them from doing that is by converting this class into an abstract class. What that means in, in practical terms is that they will not be able to do this line of code that declares an animal class. Okay, they will be able to do bat and they'll be able to do cat, but they will not be able to do that. Right now as it is, they can. Let's check picture compile still. Uh, oh. Oh, I see, I got I gotta update the names here on the inheritance. Okay, going back to this. Here we go. So it compiles, there we go. So Right now they can do it, but I don't want them to be able to declare objects of the animal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a virtual function. Uh, there are multiple different kinds of virtual functions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a pure virtual function. And I'm also going to use that to be able to identify which animal this is, depending on how we overload or define, I guess the right term would be define this function in the derived classes. Okay. Animal is a parent. Bat and cat are the derived classes. Another nickname for this is animal is the base class. Bat and cat are the derived classes. What's another one? Uh, I think I said parent and child already. Did I say that? I don't know if I did. Well, animal is the parent. Bat and cat are the child. The other one is animal is the super. And then the bat and cat are derived. Those are all terms for the same thing, okay? I'm just saying you because I might 
use them all over the place. Yeah, oh, sub, that's the one I was thinking. Yeah, so animal is super, and then bat and cat are subclasses. Yes, that's the one, because because parent and the parent and child go together, base and derive go together, and then super and sub go together. Yes, right, thank you. Thank you for that. I don't usually use that one, which probably I just forgot it. But okay, so I'm gonna write a who am I function that identifies what the animal is, but an animal is not, it doesn't, it, 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 it's nothing. It's not a bat or a cat, it's just nothing. It's, it's a it's a coverall term, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say the uama equals to zero. And this makes it into a pure virtual function. And by doing so, it will not let us, well, right now, right now as it is, it's not gonna let us create any classes at all. Because when we inherit that class, it's still abstract. Any abs if we take a if we take a parent class and we derive from it, and that abstract a parent class is abstract, the derived classes are also abstract. So yes, this is very like like existentialist thing, okay? Um, I guess because we are you know we, we are nothing or whatever. So please don't 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 take my words in weird ways with this, okay? Um, but why not? But yes, you still need a return type for the virtual function, right? Absolutely, you are correct. I forgot to do that. So let's go ahead and put that. So yes, good catch on that. Your name sounds familiar, by the way. Welcome back. I've seen you before in previous classes. Okay, so as you can see right now, I'm getting errors because everything is abstract now. And as you can see, it, when I try to declare something from an abstract class, it says cannot declare variable A, which is the animal, to be of abstract type. So that's exactly the error I want, but I only want it for animal. I don't want it for bat or cat. So how do I solve that error that I created myself, I suppose, is by defining the virtual class in the derived classes. How do I do that? It's just, just write the function in. So I can go ahead and say, uh, car, who am I? And now I want to give a body to the function. I'm just going to say return B. I'm going to say that B stands for back. Okay. Similarly, with the cat, I'm going to do the same thing. Except in this one, I am going to return a C. And there's going to be a very cool usage of this in a minute here. Well, maybe not a minute, but a little bit. Um, okay, can I have the clever? Oh, okay, great. So now I fixed the problem. Does it have to be private? Oh, shoot. No, it shouldn't be private. So, uh, I mean, it can be right now. It's compiling fine. But uh, you don't want it to be private because then when you try to call it, it's going to give you an error. So, yes, I, I mean, it doesn't matter internally. But if you are trying to use a function later, which we are going to, then it does cause issues. So don't make it private unless you have a reason for it. That was just an accident on my, on my behalf. But anyways, so now we, 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 we got what we want. We are only getting an error when we're declaring an animal. So now if we get rid of the animal object, now, and then save it, it works fine, okay? There we go, so it compiles just fine. Lowercase w. Oh no no we got we got the we got the, we got, we got everything right with the casing. So yeah, there we go. It is working fine, and it compiles fine when we make batter cats. But if we ever try to make an animal object, it gives us the error like that. So this is good. This is exactly what we were looking for. Okay. So that's one of the usages of this. The other usage of this that's more of like a practical usage, which is how the assignment is using it, is we're going to extend this idea by making an array of animals. We're gonna make a little farm, okay? So um, we can leave it all in there. Yeah, so let's go ahead and make a farm. And it's going to be uh, dynamically allocated. Should we make it dynamically? No, nah, we can make it a statically allocated. So let's just make a, a farm. Um, what are these? Of animals. So that would be animal farm. Maybe put three animals in our farm. But we are going to make them pointers, okay? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, my bad, my bad. That, by the way, always happens in my 202 class. So you guys, I'm so glad you guys are on top of that. So I always kind of, like I said, we're not really going to code much in this class. But uh, yeah, that, that, that is something that typically happens with me. I will keep typing. That's why I have to look here. But then I'm not looking at the camera uh, to make sure. Because I see a preview of the stream here. So I gotta make sure, like here I see that it cuts off the line 39 now. So yes, thank you for catching me on that. Just to uh, 
just to kind of make this a little more compressed let me just go ahead and do a code like that please don't ever put your code like that but just so that we have more space to work with and then maybe uh maybe that here as well okay just to make it a little com more compressed okay so there we go all right so um okay so we we have an array of pointers of animal type they're storing the farm okay so here's here's polymorphism in action what are we going to do here we have a bat and a cat okay and actually um it doesn't really matter but we could we could have dynamically allocated them let's dynamically allocate one of them again i just told you not to mix these but i'm going to do that because i want to make sure i ref refresh you on the arrow operator so let's go ahead and make cat dynamically allocated so cat is going to be dynamically allocated by saying cat pointer gets new cat okay the reason I'm doing that is because I want to show you how this changes. This no longer uses the period. It uses the arrow, correct? You guys remember that from uh, 202, how to use the arrow operator, basically? Because what will be the alternative of using that? Let's use it for the C, actually. If you don't want to use the arrow operator, code gets nasty. You got to use it the reference operator, but this has higher precedence over this. So therefore, you got to put parentheses around this. And this becomes parentheses inception if you have a class inside a class inside a class. And so things get pretty nasty. So that's why the arrow operator is a blessing. So yes, pointer name, X. But, it, you know, suppose that we had a class inside of, uh, of, of cat, and that was a pointer to that class, whereas it would be something like C, I, J. If we wanted to convert that line of code into pointers, then uh, it would be like this it would be uh the reference this one first put parentheses around it and then put parentheses around this one and the reference that one like that it would be like that i don't know about you but that's that's some nasty code that uh i'm not too happy to write and it can get worse than that so yeah we don't we, we don't want that kind of that kind of uh negative code in our lives right so we're just gonna use the error operator to avoid that so yes okay but i still you know quick review on that emotic <laughs> variables. okay please i think i had enough about emotic cuts in one day but yes okay so um okay so now that we uh that we have a, we have the, the bat and the cat let's go ahead and put them in our farm so we are uh we're going to adopt the cat from the shelter because we're good people and the bat i guess uh he just kind of landed in our yard and became part of the farm okay you know he he he, he fed off of the the food that was around okay so all right so in farm zero we are going to go ahead and put in the cat so the cat's already a pointer so we already have to just do this and then for the cat or the barn sorry the, the bat we are going to put him in one but that's you know passing by address off because it's a it's a it's a statically allocated thing instead of a pointer just a regular built-in data type and again maybe for farm two we're just going to dynamically allocate so like the cat breeded or something and created a baby cat a kitty and so your cat okay so uh these are the three sort of ways that you could do this don't forget your semicolon and uh let's just make sure i didn't make any typos here yeah okay we're good so this here is polymorphism at hand because let me go ahead and write a function here um actually well i have the who am i here so let me go ahead and say what if i wanted to to do an inventory of who lives in my farm you know i get a i have a, the tax man coming along to see how many animals i have and each animal has to pay tax or something okay i don't know that's just something that came up with so if i wanted to do this you know i i, I can use the who am i function for that so I can say i is less than two, because in this case it's two. Of course, I would want to have a size variable, but whatever. Or I could have done a vector, but it's fine. And so in this case, I can simply say c out um, farm i dot who am I? Or actually not dot arrow because it's a pointer. Who am I? Okay. So I'm basically saying. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? And then the animals are gonna talk back to me because they're not, you know, they're advanced. They're gonna talk back and say what they are. They're gonna say either B or C, okay? And I'm gonna be like, whoa, the animal actually talked back to me. That's crazy. And then I'm gonna go to the psychiatrist box. Okay, so there we go. We only got two out of the three to talk back. Why? 
What happened to the, oh the, the, the this one? Uh, no, when did we get the when did, What happened to the uh, to the other bat or the cat? What happened to our, our second cat? I guess I guess he was too young to talk. I guess. Um, oh, uh, maybe that. No. Yes. Yes. We we're not looping deep enough. I is less than or equal. Now that's a that's a that's a shameful error to make on stream. But there we go. There we go. Cat's alive. So yes. Okay. So um yes, we all make mistakes at all. So here we go. So we got cat, bat, and cat. And this is polymorphism, and this is the big power of virtual functions right here. That we are able to call a generic function between all the classes called who am I? And depending on what it, the object truly is, it's going to return what 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 uh what they are like. And if you if okay, so you're like, well, I could achieve this. Could I achieve this by removing the word virtual and just having this everywhere? And the answer is, it wouldn't work. So I don't want to break my code and then give you broken code. But let me let me just tell you what what it will do. If, suppose that I uh, here, I guess I can probably do it really fast. I'll just comment that out and then do car. Oh, come on. Who am I? And let's just say, in this case, I uh, I returned a whatever, just like that, okay? So I lost the whole fact that I that is no longer an abstract class and, and I have no control over it. But in addition to that, the whole thing breaks. See that? Here's the reason why. When I store the animals in the farm, I did something that is known as upcasting. Because even though the pointers or objects were of a child class, I am storing them in an, in an array of pointers of the parent class. So I am upcasting them that way, okay? So then, when I am calling the farm, who am I? The compiler thinks that because it's a pointer of the parent class, it must be an object of the parent class. And so it's calling the wrong function. It's calling the who am I for the, for the parent class. That's why I'm getting a bunch of A's. <coughs> Virtual avoids that problem, comes to the rescue. Because I, you know, actually, all I, all I really, all I have to do to fix this, technically, if all I want is to fix that, but still allow the declaration of the parent class, is just write the word virtual. That fixes it. Just that little line of code of putting in the word virtual. Although, if I don't do the version of the pure virtual function, I can create an object of the animal class, which we say we don't want to, but that's beside the point. All I'm saying is, adding the word virtual changed everything from the wrong answer to the right answer. This is, the reason for this happening is because virtual functions are, are, are binded. So when you, sorry, let me, let, me, let, me, let me calm down here. So there's a difference between compile time binding and runtime binding, okay? Virtual functions enable you the power to have runtime binding in C++. What that means is that when, in, when the compiler is looking at your code, it's like compiling the code, and it sees a line of code that says, farm who am I? It sees that you're calling the who am I function on a pointer of the type farm. But it looks at that function and it says it's virtual. So that tells the compiler, Take a minute here, hold on a second. Do not, do not bind, do not connect who am I with the parent object of far, of animal. Do not do that connection yet. Wait until you're running the code at runtime and only then when you really know if this is truly holding an object of type animal or maybe something else, then go ahead and look up what it really is. And that is known as a B table, which is where the word virtual kind of originates from and that is why it fixes this problem because it's basically it's on the compiler this is a virtual function which means that it may or may not actually be associated with this object or this class it may be associated with derived classes of this class so it's like wait off on, on the on the association or the binding until runtime which is why runtime binding and then do that so it's a lot of information i i, I do a 202 coordinator this semester i am literally going to be on top of everybody so that to make sure that 202 courses really go over virtuals because I feel like that's one of the things that they don't cover too much in detail and it's very very important conceptually but hopefully this was a little quick and crash course in virtuals I do have all of the 202 videos from the summer on YouTube 
you can go and check out the lecture on virtuals there. I might have actually used the animal thing as an example. I don't remember. So if you want more information on virtuals or any topic of this class, uh, you can check out those videos and just go and just go straight to the topic that you want. Or the internet is a big place. There's so many videos on C++. Like you could probably watch videos for the rest of your life on C++ and not see all of the videos on YouTube. That's how much videos there are. Uh, I, I, I read somewhere, I forgot, it's like every hour, every second, there's like 10 hours of YouTube content added to the internet. So, yes. Uh, yes. Don't subscribe. Don't don't throw money at me here. This bribery. So, I wish I could disable that, but I, no, I can't. So, anyways, that's the class. Um, does anybody have any quick questions of the stuff that I went over? I will do my best to try and post this piece of code in, uh, I think, either on Canvas or on the YouTube video or somewhere or form if you would like. Um, yes. So... I'll uh, I'll find a way if you really want it, but I guess I mean you can just copy it later on. I mean, it's not that much to type. Typing it is good practice. So good luck on the assignment. I am available for answers for questions. Um, I guess answers to your questions. Be ready, I guess, for the real material to start next week. And uh, please don't freak out when we talk about scary stuff next week. That's hard, but like I said, it's the hardest topic. But we'll get to it together. Uh, would you keep the playlist indefinitely after? One after we leave the class, absolutely. I have no intentions on taking down any of the content that I've recorded forever, like since I started recording classes in February. I uh, I hope that the content actually helps encourage people that are maybe can't afford to come to UNLV to still learn programming, or maybe someone that's coming out of high school who would like to prepare before they enter the CS program. So it's my intention to help those people out. Plus, hey, I want to look back in this if I, I don't know if I will stay at UNLV or if I go somewhere else, but if I do stay at UNLV and I do get old someday, which I assume I will, I want to, and, and you know, if I become old, I'll probably be a really bad professor at that point or something. I want to at least be like, hey, at some point I was okay, guys. I wasn't this bad. So I can just show them the video as defense of myself. I'll be like, my brain has degraded at this point, but like, it wasn't like this always, guys. But I still take all of your money for teaching or something. <laughs> I'm kidding. But I would like to have this as my own sort of personal uh, pride of teaching these things. So, yes. You know. And I have a bunch of other stuff on YouTube. So, you're not... Please, don't feel forced to watch anything else but this playlist. Um, yes. Disclaimer. Is using the channel points going to affect the ability to pursue extra credit? No. There are alternative extra credits, such as taking notes. Because, I mean, it would, be, uh, it would be unfair to people who don't wish to create a Twitch account to, uh, to, to, to just make this be the only extra credit. There are alternative ways of earning extra credit, such as taking notes, doing the timestamps, and sometimes I offer additional assignments or extra credit. So there's a variety of extra credits that you can go for, and it's not strictly limited to Twitch because that would be unfair for students, right? And yeah, yeah, yes, you should, you should have, I really should get rid of those, but it's kind of funny watching people the first week of the semester waste their points on non extra credit points. <laughs> it's funny in a bad way. Yes, yes, they did. Uh, anything else? I hope that you guys had a nice little review of C++. I hope that uh, that it helps you in in your sort of coming back from summer break. But uh, if not, then you guys, that's, that's what the first assignment is for. It's meant for you to kind of like suffer through it as you sort of remember the stuff, you know? And uh, this video will be uploaded to YouTube within, I would say four hours, but I also have to upload the 301 lecture, which which I'm gonna give priority to because it was taught first. So it will be uploaded tonight, you know, just not 100% sure on the time. It just depends on so many factors with the internet. But I will upload it and I will get you a link to it later on with the code, okay? So if no, if, if, if that's it, if you guys, if you have no more questions, you guys can go. I'll hang out for a few minutes to see if there's any additional stuff. How many points until the extra credit again? If I attempt the extra credit notes, do I have to tell you now? No, you don't have to tell me for the extra credit notes. The only one that I think it would be good to tell me is the timestamps. So I don't have like 10 people trying to do the timestamps because that would be kind of redundant. 
if anything you might want to split up which who's doing what time steps on what days but uh, no for the notes as you saw I hope I show I think I did show you guys right there are notes from previous times that, I, that I've taught 302 that you can use as reference and I would like to add to that collection so if anybody's interested in using their notes that can happen at the end of the semester because I mean there's no reason to tell me now also uh, I don't know yet. I have not heard ever again from DRC. They sent me one message and never again. I don't know if they want a note taker for this class. If they did, that's like a win-win situation for you because then you can note take for them and do the extra credit. But uh, I never heard from them, so I don't know what happened with that. So, yes. Maybe because it's a remote class, they're not doing it. I have no clue. But if somebody does need note taking um, and the DRC is not, not helping you out, you know, talk to me and we can figure something out. Or uh, at least you have the notes from previous semesters and stuff. Yes, those are not the only ones. There may be more in the future, but those are the ones that I currently, like, you could start off on per se, because you could start off taking good notes. You could start off on Twitch. You could start off on timestamping. And uh, like I said, I will be making more edge credit available as the semester goes on. Like I said, potentially challenge things, challenge problems extra like I, like I I will have a I usually don't have time to do tries in the regular semester so I recorded a video on tries last semester and I could make you watch that do a tries assignment and that would be a really good extra credit sometimes I so one semester I made them do a time challenge for coding um, usually the extra credits I try to make them related to the course the one exception is some, like we tried doing a debugging of an app um, over the summer and that was a cool extra credit so yes all right. Why did he get scammed? Where's my dab? Did you do a dab? Okay. There's a dab. <laughs> I can reject requests too. In theory, but there you go. There's a dab. There's a pay pay ahead dab. Can we have a challenge to make worse formative a function of code just to be cool to TAs? I think that that would be in not your benefit because the TA would probably give you a bad grade and be angry at you, even though he's supposed to be unbiased. So I would say that's not the best of ideas. That's just my opinion. So yes. So, cool. I have no idea who's left or what. So, I will just I guess I'll just call it, I'll just call it a day. So, I until until uh, I guess for this class on Monday. By the way, I am streaming the 202 lectures. So, if you are a subscriber or whatever, you get a notification that I'm going live tomorrow. It's the 202 class, okay? It's not I'm not doing 302, so I I wish I could separate that, but there's no easy way. Uh, no, no, the assignments are typically due before the next assignment happens. So like what I do is like, before the next topic that we're gonna talk about, start, okay, actually, before I can, I usually make the assignments do before the next assignment comes out. So like, suppose we finish talking about ABL trees on like Tuesday, or well, I guess, I guess Wednesday, on Wednesday, okay? In that case, if I can release the ABL tree assignment that day, then I could make the assignment before that due then, um, there's no point in making do Monday because then you have nothing to do for Tuesday, Wednesday, right? So typically I try to make them do at night, but just, just monitor that. It varies, okay? It's, I try to give you the most time possible without having like multiple assignments to do at the same time because then people procrastinate and then they get over, overwhelmed, right? So, yes. Yes, I am doing that. Absolutely, yes. I, I, I think I might have mentioned it in the WebEx meeting of the 4 p.m., but I think I forgot in the, in the 1 p.m. meeting. But uh, I am doing a... 24 hour leniency for late assignments with a reduction. So if you turn it in on time, you have the potential to get 100%. Every hour after the deadline that you turn it in for the first 24 hours, you lose 2% per hour. Yes, that is correct. So you are losing the first hour 2% and then the second hour 2% additional to that. So, so I suppose 23 hours later, you will have lost 46% of the grade and then 24 hours later, so like, as soon as the day switches, then you get a zero. So 
the example I gave is in this class you have to do the program write-up which is 30% of the grade so if you have not finished that and you turn in the assignment at the deadline you lose 30% right but if you finish it two hours later it's better to lose 4% of the grade but then you know it's a 96% versus like 70% right so that's up to you to decide hopefully you never have to use it but it is there to help you out in the case that you have to use it so you know I try to help you guys out but uh, I was thinking of making it like it counts down over 48 hours all the way to zero but I was like nah after 48% I think it's just zero at that point so I am testing that system for 301 but 301 doesn't really have any assignments I'm always trying to see if there's ways to improve so I think that's it I don't think we have anybody else so uh, until next time stay safe have a great weekend enjoy the weekend because this is probably one of the most relaxed weekends of the semester before people start bombarding you with assignments right so so enjoy it while you can but get this assignment done it's a you know it's one of the easier ones so might as well finish it and relax all right so until then see you guys around